Hello everyone and welcome back to the Durari Advent Calendar with the wonderful story A Husband for Christmas by Jolly Love. Today is day 14. Let it snow. Draco sighed as he changed the direction of where he was walking and headed to the kitchen instead. He shouldn't talk to Astoria, right? Not after he had spent such a nice fire call with Simon and after he had told him to get some distance between himself and the portrait. It could have been worse, having to marry someone by Christmas. At least Simon was nice, and he seemed to be interested in Draco and even Scorpius. Not many people were even slightly paying attention to his son when he would meet them. The fact that Simon wanted to meet him was proof to Draco that things could work out eventually. Grabbing some ice cream, he smirked over the memory of Harry and Scorpius. These two seemed to have grown on each other. Scorpius was talking about Harry all the time, and when they were together, Draco couldn't get enough of the teasing that was happening between the two of them. They seemed to be more alike than Draco thought he was with Scorpius. When dinner came, Harry had ordered pizza and given Draco's son a plain cheese one, saying something about having to pay some kind of hot chocolate twice, which had made Scorpius burst out in a fit of giggles, and Harry quickly changed the pizza to the one Scorpius had actually ordered. And when Draco finally realized whose ice cream shop they were all staying in, namely Weasley and Granger walking through the door, they hadn't even behaved weirdly, only greeted him respectfully and then hugged Scorpius as if he was a regular customer there. Eating the cold ice cream right now, Draco wandered to the TV room and sat down. He started watching some horror movie, not really concentrating on anything. Once the children had left with Granger and Draco, was about to leave with Scorpius, he saw Harry turn to Weasley. Boy, ate some ice cream, by the way. The children are sworn into secrecy. He had smacked and Weasley chuckled. His eyes had a glint of mischief. Oh, I will have fun asking Rose and Hugo if they know anything about missing ice cream. Harry nodded and winked at him. Want me to clean up here? No, go home, Harry. You'll look tired. Weasley had Anne frown at Harry and shaking his head. You're spending too much time with her again, aren't you? The question still didn't make sense to Draco. They haven't been taking too much time from Harry for it to be in again. Who could he mean? No matter how much he thought of it, he couldn't figure it out. The monster was just showing its ugly head and the people in the TV were shooting at it wildly when Draco heard footsteps and turned to look at Scorpius with a stuffed teddy in his arm. He had always looked so innocent and cute whenever it was in the middle of the night, and he was out of bed. Can't sleep? His son asked and walked into the room, sitting down on the couch next to him while placing the teddy on his lap. Draco smiled over the simple role reversal. No, and you? Scorpius shook his head. Is Simon going to live with us? Yes, Scorp. If I marry him, he's going to live here. Draco briefly wondered where this conversation was going when Scorpius shook his head. I don't want Simon as my dad. I want Harry. Taken aback by this sudden honesty, Draco frowned at his son and found him hugging his teddy bear closely, avoiding eye contact as if he feared Draco was about to freak out. He probably would have if he hadn't been so taken by surprise. Why would you say that, Scorp? You don't even know how Simon is. We'll meet him soon. Nobody is better than Harry. Scorpius was still avoiding eye contact. Draco sighed. Listen, son, we can't always get what we want. I know it's Christmas and you probably already wrote a wish list to Santa, but he can't hand out love. Scorpius frowned. So you're saying you love Simon? That was a good question. Did he love Simon? Well, no. There was nothing when he thought of him. Not like when he remembered seeing Harry and Scorpius together. But there's this muggle idiom saying that if life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. Which means what? Scorpius tilted his head. Draco placed an arm around his son's shoulder. You make the best of what is given, Scorp. His son didn't seem to get it. Which is why you have to marry Harry. Scorpius, listen. Couldn't even start to explain why it wouldn't work, but his ten-year-old son shook his hand and interrupted him quickly. No, Harry and you work together. You like him, he likes you, I know you that. There's no rule saying you can't marry Harry. 
Why are you not seeing what's right in front of your eyes? Because I've already agreed to marry Simon Scorp. I can't get out of the contract unless he would break one of the rules we have set up. And don't that just dumb? Scorpius answered and left the room without any further comments. To be continued. <laughs>